Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, so we're Visualytics. We started about uh, a year ago. And our objective is to bring artificial intelligence to clinical decision support systems. So the company is uh, the management's myself, the uh, CEO, and a, a man called Samir Trika. Samir is an ophthalmic surgeon who works uh, in Harley Street, as well as working um, with King's College Hospital for the NHS. Uh, myself, I have an engineering background, and subsequently I went into finance, and I've uh, moved since to Visualytics and head up the business side. So as I'm sure we all heard before, there's been an AI revolution recently. And that's been powered by the fact we now have the software and the hardware to perform the specific tasks that computers can now do. The most interesting one of these tasks is when computers are able to detect images and detect image anomalies better than humans. And that's what we're seeing. And the particular type of software that can do this is called deep learning. Effectively, deep learning is where you use an algorithm show it hundreds of images, millions of images, of dogs, cats, and other animals, honey badger in this case. It learns from training to, de to, to differentiate between the different images. And then it produces a classification. And there's a feedback loop so it can learn better from its, from its uh, training. You then produce a classifier. Now, this classifier takes any image that you input. It uses the algorithm that was created and produces a diagnostic or a decision on what that particular animal, or in this case, animal is. Now, clearly, this kind of solution has been used in technology, in transport, in security, and in healthcare. And healthcare is very interesting because the background is there's huge financial pressure on healthcare services around the world. There's an aging population. This is true in every continent except for Africa. And there's a shortage of specialists. That's everywhere. And so that's pretty much why we came to the decision to approach healthcare with this technology. And our primary focus is in ophthalmology, hardly surprising given that Samir is an ophthalmic surgeon. It's domain knowledge that we have in-house. And what's all the things I mentioned before are particularly true in ophthalmology. There's huge financial pressure. You don't have enough specialists. That financial pressure is causing fewer and fewer people to have a diagnosis when they have a condition and when it develops. And in the case of ophthalmology, you often have conditions which create irreversible sight loss. And that's terrifying, both for the patient and for the economy in general. The first condition we thought we'd address is a condition called age-related macular degeneration. Now, this condition affects 8.7% of over 45-year-olds around the world. That's going to be 200 million people in 2020. Effectively, what macular degeneration looks like is this. You ha here you have a normal image of two boys with a football playing. And an artist has put up a representation of what an AMD patient would see. In this situation, you have the central vision has been obscured by this condition. Effectively, there's a buildup of toxins um, between the macula and the membrane that allows nutrients to pass to the macula. And it creates an occlusion in the central vision. Now, clearly, we all use our central vision to read, to recognize faces, to, to perform all kinds of tasks. And somebody with this condition can't really function. Now, this particular representation is quite late stage. So by this point, the patient should have already been seen and treated. But typically, you don't really find out until quite late. And by that point, it's pretty, pretty hard to have a meaningful therapy. So, in order to perform these types of scans to diagnose AMD, you need an OCT scanner. These scanners, at the moment, you find them in GP surgeries, you find them in hospitals all over the world. But generally speaking, the specialists don't know how to read the images. You have to then get referred with your scan to a specialist. Typically, there's a 15, 20-week waiting list. And then eventually, you're seen. So we created a tool called Centaur. Now, Centaur is a black box solution that plugs into the OCT scanner that we saw before and effectively is able to diagnose the scan, tell you whether it's normal, whether that person has dry macular degeneration, diabetic swelling, or wet macular degeneration at above human levels of accuracy. So your specialist isn't as good as this solution. And what's even more amazing is that can do it instantly. So if you have the device, you have the solution, you have the diagnostic. In this part of the world, we have 15 wheat waited queues. In some emerging markets, there might be one specialist in an entire town, one specialist in a city. So clearly, there's huge demand to have this kind of tool used for the masses. 
The second set of conditions we're looking at are glaucoma and diabetic retinopathy. This is 350 million people worldwide. Again, you have somebody here who has a normal, you know, normal vision. Someone with glaucoma has very strong central vision, but their peripheral vision has been lost. Now, what's scary about that is your peripheral vision is very good at detecting objects, the collisions, you know, uncertainty. So if I'm walking down the stage, my peripheral vision is going to tell me there's something there. So what happens is people with that condition often have accidents and injuries, and eventually they go blind. Again, not spotted. And if you have it today, your mind will do such a good job at screening out the, the peripheral vision loss that you won't even know. Until it's very bad, you won't know. With diabetic retinopathy, you will know because random occlusions start appearing in your vision, and it makes it impossible, again, facial recognition, working, reading, writing, and so on. And in, the really interesting thing is, in order to get the retinal image to make the diagnostic for this, these two conditions, all you need is a smartphone with a little, little attachment to zoom into the back of the retina. You take that image, and you pass it through our tool, Pegasus, which is a cloud-based solution. So you upload your image, and it will tell you whether your image is normal or abnormal, again, with above specialist level of accuracy. So both solutions at the moment are being trialed and tested by academic institutions and by clients around the world. Both are market ready and are in the stage where we're now willing to publish results and have enter formal negotiations with our clients. And our next steps, as well as refining our existing tools, are to expand into cardiology, radiology, neurology, and pathology. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any further questions, I'll be around. I'll be at the back. Or go to our website, visualytics.com, or email me, j at visualytics.com. Thanks very much. Any questions? Yeah, I've got a couple of minutes. Any questions? If not, I'll be at the back. So for these very serious diseases like macular degeneration, in future you can go to your optician and they will be able to tell you about it or glaucoma. Uh, they already do glaucoma, I think. Uh, but um, o um, the, the di diabetic, retinology diabetics, yep. they can already uh, test you for that. They will be able to test you for that, especially macular degeneration is... Uh, something very serious, uh, yeah. and I don't think you can, uh, as you say, there's a waiting list now, you know, and you only know it when it's very late into the stage already, you know, so maybe in future the uh, opticians will be able to test it re on a regular basis for absolutely. people over a certain age anyway. You yeah. Know. yeah, absolutely. Um, just a quick question for you, actually. If a coin toss is 50-50, and I tell you you've got glaucoma or you don't have glaucoma, what do you think the GP is? Is he 90% accurate? Is he 80% accurate? How accurate do you think a GP is? Non-specialist. A GP, uh, maybe 50-50. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's the person who's currently telling you whether you have glaucoma. This person who flips a coin and says, you do or you don't. That's 95%. That's why you want that in your home. That's why you want that in your spec savers, your boots, your Walmarts, everywhere that people go and have these scans around the world. I don't think the GPs are sufficiently trained to provide the diagnostic accuracy that you could trust. That's just, they're not trained in that way. It's too general. I've um, got time to just to you one more question, if that's okay. So, uh, gentleman over here. Yeah, sure. Hi, hi, Jay. Um, so, what are you actually selling then? Are you selling the machine or the software or what, what do you say that visual text dot com is, is, is actually, are you looking for an investment to, to sell the equipment? Yeah, exactly. So we already have a cloud-based solution, and we're currently driving traffic to that cloud-based solution. At the moment, it's in trial in a f in, with a few academic institutions and some partners. The objective is to have that available for anyone. Anybody goes in, takes a photo, and they get a diagnostic, and we charge them a pound for that scan. The second solution is a black box. That device looks a bit like a hard drive, plugs into any device. The, the OCT devices that were showed you. There, it plugs into these devices. 
And so once you've had that scan at your GP or in your healthcare center, it will just tell the technician what the diagnosis is according to these classifications. Again, that technician that you see after the 15 week queue, he only gets the scan. You then have to wait for the specialist to actually view the scan. By this point, you're months into the process and you have no idea what's going on. And more importantly, you should be having these updated scans every month to track the condition. Now, clearly, if the waiting list itself is 15 weeks, you can't have monthly monitoring. That's the problem. Anytime. Thank you. I'll be at the back if anyone has any questions.